Hello, this podcast comes with a warning. And that warning is that for some reason my audio stopped recording at about the 50 minute mark. Um, I've edited it so that it still kind of makes sense, uh, but there will be parts where if someone responds to something I've said or sounds like I should have said something, but I just don't. Um, yeah, I was still talking to them via the chat, but for some reason Audacity decided to throw me the finger. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Please enjoy the rest of the podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Game of Time podcast. Uh, this is episode number six now, and this week I am joined by Mike. Say hello. Hello. And George, say hello. Ahoy. Sorry, George, I completely nearly blanked on your name there. <laughs> it's that's, late. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is late. This week, uh, Mike is going to talk to us a bit about Planet Coaster and why it's such a disappointment, and then we're going to do some Game of the Year stuff as well. So, Woo! you want to lead us off, Mike, with the terrible news that well, <laughs> Planet Coaster is I mean, not yeah, good. You're a bit devastated. <laughs> I was so looking forward to it being good, and it's not. I'm just going to go back to playing Theme Park World. I've I've got it on my PlayStation somewhere. <laughs> you can just dig out the PS1. Yeah, uh, and then get Theme Hospital as I well. I wonder if it's on, my, on Vita, actually. You talk, and I'm going to search <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I started off this week finally having some money. I was like, yeah, I can get all these sick games that I've been wanting to get. So I went for Planet Coaster first, yeah, rather than Roller Coaster Tycoon World, because it was something new, and I was like, oh, I'll give this a go, rather than go back to my old norm, Roller Coaster Tycoon World, because I've been massively playing that for years, and it's just a bit crap. Um, in terms of like. You know how whenever you're creating theme parks in any of your games, and you want, you want to feel like you've got choice. Yeah. So obviously that you can build your own roller coaster, and that's a choice from having the pre-built ones. But when you want to go in depth and try and make your awesome theme park with like the scenery and all the extra stuff, but even if it's like, even down to like bins and benches and stuff like that, there's just no choice. That's such and a they've shame. Got, they're kind of well, they've got like four categories. You might have your your adventure, your sci-fi. I think it's your fantasy, and then there's another one I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. So obviously you get little theme ones based with that. But if you kind of want to go off track a little and make a bit of a more generic place, they've got a few generic items. But then there's nothing kind of like that would fit in if you wanted to do something that wasn't one of those four themes. Yeah. You know, I don't know, say I don't want to do a sci-fi, I'd like to do something, I don't know, like a slightly medieval area, maybe. And there's some rides you can get along with that, and then maybe some rocks and castle walls that sort of shit you can do that just but it's just so limited in what you can actually choose to do that's a shame yeah i was kind of disappointed and the, the management stuff isn't as good as roller Ty- coaster tycoon is you know how like the in-depth stuff with your um and what they call them, peeps on roller coaster tycoon so people who visit your park yeah and your whole management and the whole park management thing is a lot more simple than it was in all the other games, mm. like Roller Coaster Tycoon and stuff, and that was kind of irritating. Uh, I just didn't enjoy it. I see. I I I had high hopes that it was going to be like the sort of city skylines, or was to Sim City. It was going to be like that sort that's, of thing. I mean, that's kind of what I thought it was because because I mean, so is Roller Tycoon. I mean, so is Roller, to- Roller Coaster Tycoon a, a dead franchise? And I I kind is it is it still going? No. Yeah, they just so they just released Roller Coaster Tycoon. World, oh, okay. But it's been. It's been in early access for eight months ish, mm. so they've kind of the hype's not been there because you've okay, been, yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd heard me, uh, yeah, because I'd, I'd heard nothing about that. I'd kind of assumed that Planet Coaster was similar to, yeah, as you said, um, City Skylines, kind of being the the spiritual successor to the failure that was the recent SimCity. I can't, I can't, I, kind of, I, I assumed there was a sort of similar dynamic going on with Planet Coaster. Mm. Yeah, so what's basically happened, Roller Coaster Tycoon World's been in early access. And they've been bringing updates, getting the community to help them with things, and I'll say, you know how they do on early accesses. And then Planet Coaster went, oh, we're coming out on this day. And Roller Coaster Tycoon World went, oh, shit. We'll, we'll release as well, fuck it. <laughs> and then, so I played Roller Coaster Tycoon World as well, and it's exactly the same. <laughs> so neither Whereas of them in all, are good. <laughs> yeah, they're both shit. Like, in all the older ones, you know, 
boatloads of customization options. And I know they bring in expansions and that obviously build on it. Mm. But it seems what both games are doing now is relying on mods from the community. Yeah. So obviously the mod, mod tools are there. They've integrated them properly. You can upload your designs and stuff easily enough. It's all a very simple process. Mm. Then they've just felt like, oh, then what's the point in us building shit when the community can just do it for us? So there's an option to like click or enable all of these mod mod things that other people have done and put them into your game. So when you click the list on there, you can just put them into your park. Right. Which is fairly cool. It's a really decent system. Yeah, but yeah. It seems like they've kind of relied on that to fill the parks with stuff rather than having a really good base to go from. That's a shame. Because like if you were playing it offline, for example. Um, not that many people would do that nowadays anyway, but I know your internet goes down and you've got two weeks. It's just, you're not going to be, you can't immerse yourself in them like you used to be able to. Yeah. I think that's my problem. I just never got, like The Sims, The Sims is one for me. It always gets better and better besides the game, the glitches and bugs that it gets. But content wise, it's always really different or significantly better and mm. you can kind of get lost all the time. Yeah. Where yeah. I've kind of got halfway through my parks, put a good chunk of time into it and been like, eh. Oh, I should probably go to bed. And then I've gone, oh, yeah, I'll go to bed. Huh. Whereas with all the previous games, I've gone, nah, I'll stay up for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm not too bothered. Is it, so is the, is, the main, is the core of the game like a campaign mode where you sort of start off with a budget and have to make profit to expand the park? Or is it a sort of... Yeah, yeah. So they, they both have that sort of stuff. So uh, Planet Coast has gone a bit more narrative-y. Um, narrative? Nothing kind of out of this world. Not narrative, narrative, but it won't just be, um, oh, get your theme park up in value or oh, right, like, okay. roller coaster is they've kind of made, trying to make it a bit more personal like i don't know your guests uh you need to become oh, how, how do they say it i can't remember but it's sort of along the lines of you small about pleasing your guests and yeah you've got to build the park and get profit and stuff but you also have to have all the other objectives right as well. okay it's not like timmy's Pretty walking around with a question mark above his head and he needs to have two ice cream sodas otherwise you failed a quest yeah, yeah, or, like... yeah. i mean not obviously that but <laughs> some kind of in in that whereas roller coaster tycoon world I got an achievement for one person entering my park. <laughs> when what it does is it always spawns two in there anyway. What? <laughs> so it's kind of like, oh, so I'm getting an achievement for my first park visitor, and all I had to do was load up the game. Yeah. And kind of, and then obviously all the achievements for both games are fairly simple. <laughs> um, but they, but yeah, so they, back to before they both have their normal sandbox mode. Yeah. Which is kind of what I always jump straight into before anything else, because I just like building shit. And then usually when I get bored, I'll hit the the campaign slash. Um, cha- well, challenge, challenge-y? Yeah, we'll call them challenges. So your first one, you'll have to get 100,000 visitors or, and so on and so on and so on. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, they do both have that sort of thing. Fair enough. It's kind of the sort of standard progression for those sort of things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, well, you've got, you've got to have one mode and that's how, I mean, for people who don't play them and it might be quite new, yeah. that's where you'll learn all your stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then you jump into Sandbox, whereas an experienced uh, tycoon of theme parks like myself can just jump straight in. Because <laughs> the controls aren't, albeit, that dissimilar to each other anyway. But, I don't know, I just, I just wasn't wasn't hooked. And I'm gutted. That's a shame. I'm gutted. I, I haven't even I, I played them. I am just going to learn to code correctly and make my own. Yeah. Because I, I, I can make a better game than both of these guys. So it's not something that the mods can save then? Like, there's nothing that... Oh, I guess the mods could save it. But that's one of those that takes time. I mean, if they... Not open mods, but allowed the community a select few maybe to I don't know, in an early access, but a closed early access sort of thing, where they could maybe create mods and help build content. But both games, I feel, they've just you can't release a game with nothing. It's, they feel both feel bare bones. Yes. And they've relied on the community to fill it. So in a year's time, these both could be absolutely phenomenal, excellent games. Right. But I'd much rather any developer take the extra year to develop something and then rather than release it and let the, let everyone else save save their asses basically. Yeah. Just seem they they came out really near to each other then, like properly oh, yeah. released. Yeah, so Roller Coaster Tycoon never had a proper release date. Yeah, it was always in early access, and they were like, "Oh, due end of the year or early next year or whatever." Mm. And then Planet Coaster released, and they they released the next day. But I don't yeah. Why would you do that? That just seems like madness. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, for, for me, I would wait for Planet Coaster to release. Yeah, let them take their chunk of the market, which they'll take. Yeah. Any anyway, regardless. Exactly. Because they've had better advertising, for example. Well, so they're still going to take a chunk, see what they do well, what they do terribly, that's, yeah. and then implement it into my game and release it that's three, it. three months down the line. Exactly what I was thinking. Like, yeah, just see what they've done. See if you can sort of slyly nick a bit of it. And then 
make you better. It was a better version of theirs, sort of, because they've. I mean, they're all they're different, but they're still very similar. That you could do that. <laughs> it seems very odd. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's a bit like they've they're theme parks. They're all going to be similar, so you can. Yeah, it's it's. Well, I don't know. I think I'm just more pissed off and gutted that I can't. I don't feel like I want to plunge loads of hours into them. Where normally I might spend four or five days hammering them. Yeah. And I'm not too bothered about going back to them now, to be honest. That's a shame. I was walking around tonight going, oh, I need something to play. And those two games never crossed my mind. Right. That's a shame. Unfortunately. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to a forestry simulator. Yes, you should. Next. That, that's going to be my new favourite one. Because I have a code for that somewhere. You need to... Probably is, that... It. But it's a... is that a simulator it's in a line treat. with other simulators? Like farming and mining and... Yeah, yeah. So I can't remember how they described this one, but it was something like the tree surgeon simulator or something like that. It's it's like American forestry, so it's like cutting down trees and running those sort of you know, like the super cool documentaries on the History Channel about those tree guys. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you can cut the tree down rather than that line of work. Squash yourself. Oh yeah, I mean, that's my first thing. I'm I wonder trying. if there's bears. Thing. You can't kill anyone on Planet Coaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and half the fun on Roller Coaster Tycoon was building half a half a roller coaster and seeing how far you could get the, the coaster to fly. <laughs> you were one of those psychopaths that took the, took the stairs am, out yeah. of the pool in The Sims, weren't you? <laughs> and watched them drown. I do feel like I'm being a bit harsh, so I'll, I'll go focus on something good. Their coast, or Planet Coaster's roller coaster design was, uh, is actually pretty good. Right. Slightly different to get used to, so once you do the tutorials and stuff, you can build them. But their options for building coasters were better. Mm. So you can actually take like a put a chain link on and go almost vertical up, right? And you could probably you could basically do it a full loop backwards. So I could start at one side, bring it up in the air behind, and all vertically, and bring it in behind myself. Hmm. Not that it'd be any fun to do that in real life, but like that sort of design was something that was never available on those old games. So it always kind of had to make sense. Whereas now you can literally just do whatever you want. Make it a bit more unrealistic. Which is kind of cool, and and it does look very good. Yeah, it kind of did the whole, you know, when City Skylines came out, and it went. It's not just a cool game to play; it looks fucking gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. And they they've kind of hit that part of it. It does look really, really good. Uh, that's good. Not on my PC, but on the videos I've watched. <laughs> <laughs> my PC is a lot of shit. Well, uh, it's hard, but, but yeah, like so... they've put a lot more time into making it look pretty than actually fun to play. That's just a bit of a shame. But that's what sells it. It's a bit, yeah. I feel like if they made a game that did function really well, it wouldn't suit the television advertisements it's got. I suppose. Is that TV adverts? Yeah, that's what I'll it? tell you today. Gosh. Which was different. Which means that that's where that chunk of the market's going to come from. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the games had adverts on TV. I guess it's just I haven't. What? Yeah. I, I haven't watched keep seeing... live TV in forever. Yeah, no, me neither. The um, a bus goes past my window every uh, half an hour. I keep seeing Final Fantasy go one way and then Titanfall 2 come back the other. <laughs> <laughs> Surreal. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping, as you said, maybe within a year with a community coming together, plus dev patches and stuff, mm. both games could be absolutely unreal. Yeah, hopefully they but... do some sort of free DLC or something if it's like has such a like poor launch. Well, it was... Uh, there was loads of people with Roller Coaster Tycoon paying for it because it's now come out of early access and gone into full release. Yeah, and they haven't fixed all the bugs. Some people can't even get on the game. Uh, it seems. I think mean, I had two crashes today just trying to flip between menus. Yeah, it just seems mad that they've like suddenly gone. We'll release at the same time as them. I mean, they might have already planned it. Yeah, but, but... It, there was no actual date given really right. until well, fair enough. very very near to the release date. Yeah. So if you'd never announced it and something very similar to you has dropped like two days before when you were, you just go, okay, well, we'll just wait. We have, we're in early access. People can buy it anyway. It's not actually making a massive difference to say we're officially released now yeah, to yeah. where it's still you're, in early you're, access. You're already giving it to people. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> it seems bizarre. And the mind of a game developer. Yeah, yeah. Wait. What I'm glad I haven't got I imagine it's not very fun. Well, it's like when like Titanfall Two came out at like the weirdest time. Yeah, as Why I didn't like that come out in like three months when people have gotten bored of everything else. Seems well, yeah, they're trying weird. to grab that share of the market, aren't they? Well, I don't know. Well, I don't but know it like... just seems weird because they're both EA, like EA. And know, like, it Why makes they... you think that EA had like something happened between like EA and 
respawn. Like yeah, it does. So there's some, it, like it. there's someone in sort of like EA upper management that either that just like does just doesn't either just doesn't care for respawn. It does seem a bit like that. But yeah, so I think Titanfall's the better game. Yeah, I just think it's just like I just think it's like a crying shame that the community is, is dropping off. Like I have not <laughs> been able to get in a game of Capture the Flag since launch, just because. Is that not? Is that still on the second yeah. page? Because I think half of that problem with that game mode is that it's on the second yeah, page. Yeah, but I mean, like, like if there, I mean, if there were enough players, there'd at least be a couple of fringe people just clicking onto that second page. Yeah, but... I think it only searches for predominantly searches for people in your own faction first. So if you're on the kind of standard UK faction, it will go through that list to find players before it will go through any other list. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'd like I immediately left the, the the like the default network. Yeah. Uh, advanced uh, ADP, yeah. isn't it? Probably. Yeah, it's been weird this year. Like every game has come out within the space. Like all, well, every game, but all like the sort of like Christmas time AAA releases well, came it's out. Been two chunks of games. Well, it? they've all come out like in the space of about three weeks. We've, we've got like we've had we've got like uh, Last Guardian has come out now, and then we've got nothing for the next couple of weeks. Normally you get, it's more staggered. Well, we always have a drop about now anyway. Well, no, but even before. Yeah, there's usually one more this month and then we won't have anything until early February. Well, well yeah, there's a couple of things. The out. Christmas drop-off, as I call it. Yeah, but, but there's actually a few decent games coming out at the start of next year. It was just weird that like, because we had Battlefield 1, uh, Dishonored, Watch Dogs, <laughs> Titanfall 2, Call of, and Card Call of Duty. All came out in the space of about two, three weeks. Uh, and then like yeah, we had like weeks where well. nothing was really coming out. All the sports uh, games just... they release about now, don't they? Yeah, they do. It just uh, it's just weird. Like why they released like that chunk earlier than than like together. There must be a reason. Yeah, they always want them before Christmas to get the Christmas sales, don't they? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, probably, I assume they'll make more money sales in December than they would in January. Yeah, they wanted to get like Black Friday sales and stuff as well, and they actually. I always forget yeah. that that's like. Well, Titanfall should have got. They dropped their price right down for Black Friday. Mm. Because they obviously got a really small portion of the market. Yeah, well, like it. Because everything else came they, out. Yeah, I was like, they didn't do anything like Origin. It didn't drop on Origin though on PC, which is really disappointing because it's still, fifty quid. Yeah. And, like the the player base had a couple of games this week, and like nine in the evening in the UK we were four thousand players. Oh wow! That's, yeah, and it, I, it yeah. hit about it hit like thirteen thousand during the free weekend. Uh, and it's just that's still not a lot. No, I mean like you compare weekend. it to you look at the Steam figures, uh, and I mean and like there are I think there were like thirty thousand people playing Civ Five the week after Civ Six released. Yeah, it's there's like... so many people playing it, but like mm. loads of stuff is not sold well this year. All the sequels, everyone's poor because they're spending money on every other new console people keep releasing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, Maybe I think, that's it. Yeah, like Titanfall, like I think it's probably been the best year for shooters in a while, but at the same time, could like I think Titanfall is a sign that it could be the last good year for shooters, but. Yeah. Like, I feel, I feel like, I'm hoping I, I feel next like year I'm, everything goes back to its roots a bit yeah. more. I don't know, I thought I'll, I'll, I'll mention it more when we get when we get onto the what's it, action games and the game awards. Yeah, well, once we get to the game shooter section, we can both let loose there because all I play is first person shooters pretty much. <laughs> I very rarely do so. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously really poorly made theme park games. <laughs> yeah, your favourite genre. But really you poorly made the theme park games. <laughs> All I need now is an RPG to play, and we're sorted. <laughs> yeah, you should play Final Fantasy XV. Set, oh, yeah, George, George set in George the theme right park. I, I hate RPGs. <laughs> there's nothing I hate more than RPGs and games. Yeah. <laughs> we try. We had a really nice section on the first season of the podcast, actually, where I just pulled every single RPG apart. How did you feel about Titanfall trying to sneak some decisions at you? I don't want to have to, I don't want no, to, have to decision... choose what to say. <laughs> so that was... That's like, I'm, that doesn't affect gameplay. You better take the role out of this playing. <laughs> it's like stats, yeah, it, numbers. It works. Yeah. What do you mean stats? I get an extra five jump. Fuck you. <laughs> I just want to be able to jump. But you like Destiny. I just, you're mad. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> uh, brings in elements of an RPG. It's mainly it's an okay. MMO. It's RPG. It, yeah. Nah, it's mainly a first-person it, shooter. Well, I'd argue. No, not really. Because if you were. In the sense that if you're level one, 
in Destiny, you have you're going to do nothing against someone who's level forty. Oh yeah, the level based system is fucked. So I, 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 I won't like, like, the, about that. It's all they've had about four different level systems since yeah. they started because they don't even know what works. Yeah, well, because it's all equipment based, so it, it's it is primarily an RPG. Yeah, I did. I dropped off Destiny. I that released this year as well. In that big cluster of games, the second chunk of Destiny, the uh, the Iron, Iron Rise, Rise of Iron. Yes, that one. But I mean, de- like, de- yeah, I hammered that for two weeks. The raid was re- the best raid they've done yet, and then it's dropped right off. Yeah, yeah, when it was did... good. I played it for like a month, and then when I bought it. It just wasn't enough. Destiny. That one, like, core release originally two years ago now. Yeah, yeah, huh. it's the second year. Yeah, because they did the proper year Destiny Year Two was last year, and they released the was it the House of Wolves. Or the other one? I don't know. Taken King came out well, like. Yeah, Taken King was the main second Came out one, in like it? November last year. Yeah, so that was the year two, and then they've done the third one. Yeah. Which was the Rise of Iron. Yeah, which just wasn't. Which as still good. wasn't that good. It was a shame. It was just there was just not as much to do, and I didn't, the campaign wasn't as like grand. It was like over in a few hours, and you were like, "Are we won." We've won! Hooray, we've yeah, won! Yeah, I, got it, I got it done quite fast. I mean, there's a few hidden bounties to do, but they weren't like... Yeah. It's just not enough content. It was just... I think it was really hard to follow the Taken King, though. Like, the quality yeah, of Taken King was just, like, astounding. Like, the, the range of things to do and, like, the quality of the campaign. Yeah, I think the narrative this time around was much better as well. In terms of how they... Uh, yeah, it might not have been as long, but they def- you definitely seem to be able to follow a story well, this time. Well, yeah, but I never really... More so than you've ever I been. I suppose. But it, it might just not have... I know it didn't link to anything previously. Uh, it wasn't that. Long, I just didn't... But the story kind of on its own was all right. Yeah, it didn't really wrap up or, like, do anything, though. It was like... No, because if, you're going to have to pay another 40 quid for the end. It just maybe. felt like filler. It felt like... like, like yeah, it did. You didn't did need to have it. <laughs> like, the... The the whatever the big robot thing was you saw at the beginning just sort of disappeared and you're like yeah it was kind of yeah I went and like whacked some dead guys and then blew up a place thank you <laughs> what was this doing is it's weird and it, nothing really felt very threatening which is why when it sort of ended I was like is there more is there this like build up yeah, to the end the, or is this the end the <laughs> The run out of the tunnel. Yeah, I was very confused that like, everything started to blow up. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's over. We're finished. <laughs> so the one thing I liked about Destiny overall was like the creation of dif- the different races for each planet. Yeah. Originally, like the, uh, and the difference between the Fallen and the Vex. Yeah. Two completely different enemies, both fight completely different ways. I thought that was like a super awesome part of it. Yeah, yeah. But then what they've done now is they're just elaborating on those slightly. Yeah, I. So you have the the fallen, which was just basically, sorry, the whichever the the dark, whatever the fuck they were called, you know which ones I mean. The the, the black and white motherfuckers. What? Call them. You know the guys who, uh, they kind of hologram in. Oh, the the, the vex. vex but, no, yeah, but they brought the new ones out. Uh, and they were all like just d- black and white. Oh, the, the dark light stuff. <laughs> yeah, that you mean. So they're the taken version. Really don't know how to explain yeah, it. The taken ones. Like, taken, yeah, the taken. Sorry, that makes more <laughs> I didn't know. No, I'm being an idiot. It's my description to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they did them. So it was a play on. They were all versions of previous enemies. But I think that over. they were done a lot better then, than like what they did in. They were done cleverly. They felt like yeah. They just as- added things. Oscar Pistorius blades to the fallen. <laughs> That's all they did this time around. <laughs> All they needed, all they needed, was a cricket bat, and it would have been a bit more threatening. It was hard as well because I think the fall are like the least interesting of all the yeah, races. They're the most generic, aren't they? They're like, oh, they're like space pirate people. Um, yeah, we've seen that before. I was really looking forward to the uh, the space marine guys. I can't think what they're called now, but they're like space marine guys, <laughs> um, and like learning about them. Different. So we didn't. <laughs> Hopefully, Destiny 2. Gonna... Yeah, it seems like they do. Here, here's all this new stuff. But we'll just tell you more about the old stuff. Yeah. And leave you guessing on the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Destiny, yeah, man. Move it swiftly on, <laughs> because we'll, uh, I think we could go about that all day. Probably. Um, should we hear some Game of the Year? Yes, I think that sounds like a good plan. So, for anyone listening who doesn't read the internet at all, <laughs> that is this week were the official video game awards. Yeah, and in defence, very of, similar to the VMAs. <laughs> in defence of people who don't read the internet a lot, I read the internet a lot, and I didn't look at this until about two hours ago. So, 
<laughs> so yeah, don't worry, um, people. So we'll just run through the categories quickly. Um, so obviously the main ones, they're big game of the year. They do best studio slash game direction, best narrative, best art direction, best music slash sound design, best performance, games for impact award, indie games, best mobile, best VR, best that. You get the you get the, the, you get the gist of it. all the usual There's suspects of like yeah the best everything of. you'd expect to find in awards for games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll leave the game of the year official decision to kind of the end of this. Um, what do you want to hit first? I'm thinking the more controversial ones to chat about. Let's, I'd start with the RPG one because I oh, that, yeah, that's a I, lo- I, was, I was like when I was looking down that was the one that stood out and I went does that count? Does that count as a I'm, I mean I haven't played the the because Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt Blood and Wine won it um, yeah. but I, I mean I haven't played the Blood and Wine ex- expansion but but well, I don't know it just it is weird it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, well, I mean, it's got to sting a bit if you lose to an expansion yeah. yeah, to a DLC. It, yeah, I really expected Dark Souls 3 to take it. Wait, did we did we say what won the best role-playing game? Like a, so, so, so yeah, it was The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine. And then your runners-up were Dark Souls 3, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, World of Warcraft, and Legion, and Xenoblade Chronicles X. So I'd really like to play Xenoblade Chronicles X, but it's only on Wii U, and I can't justify buying a Wii U for like two or three games that I'd actually want to play on it. So yeah, definitely it's such a shame because I quite enjoyed the 3DS version, because um, that's just regular Xenoblade Chronicles. But X like is like on a much grander scale, and you get a mech, and there's like giant dinosaurs and stuff. It looks really cool. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I was just surprised Dark Souls 3 didn't win. It just seemed like the obvious well, yeah, for choice. I've seen. I mean, obviously, being such a lover of RPG games, I, I know everything about them. Yes, yes. <laughs> <But> the... <laughs> Regalers with your knowledge, Michael. <laughs> But I was like, the first thing I said to you was, "Hang on, wasn't The Witcher Three Blood and Wine a DLC?" Yeah, and like, I don't think it's even fair for it to be, because it's still kind of like, for me, it's living on its previous laurels anyway, because it was already Game of the Year last year and absolutely wiped the floor with everyone. And I'm assuming it yeah. won Best Role Playing Game last year. Yeah, yeah, and Game of the Year and fucking everything. <laughs> Talk about seven awards last. It year. is really good. The Witcher Three, don't get me wrong, is amazing. Yeah, um, I really want. I really want to play un- it. I'm just trying, trying to finish The Witcher Two. Yeah, yeah. I think, which I've been playing for about three years. Long, you, longer, longer. Um, actually, yeah. four. Like, I started. <laughs> I started it absolutely ages ago. Uh, but which bit are you at? Uh, I made a lot of progression recently because I started playing right. on a laptop that could barely run it, and then <laughs> so <laughs> was wasn't having a huge amount of fun, and then. Uh, because I think The Witch Two has like has a really strong sort of like first half, and then it just steadily gets a bit worse. So it's just not worth doing any of the side stuff, just plowing through and just finishing it. Yeah, I know. I kind of did, I wasn't enjoying the first half that much. I was like, I because I, when you're you're in the sort of swamps. Yeah, I, and I was Witcher like, Witcher loves I, this, loves the swamp. I'm not. I was like, I want to get out of this grotty swamp town and. Go somewhere exciting, and so yeah. I spent a really long time there. But because I because I'd never quite like it would never quite stick. I'd always play for like an hour an hour and be like I'm gonna get back into this, and then two months later I haven't touched it again. And they'd be like right, oh no I've right. got to I've got to get back and try and remember what I was doing. Uh, Maybe you just need some Witcher three in your life. <laughs> Maybe it's time no. to uh, read the wiki wiki on the plot of Witcher two. To, yeah, to get it fact, out of the way and just and just jump into. You kind of get a summary of it, and if you haven't. Yeah. Like I played. Well, I was saying I dr- jumped into it recently and just and, and like spent a while doing my homework, re- reading on what on all of the sort of context of what was happening. I was like, oh, that's actually quite interesting. Yeah. And I and I made it out of the swamps uh, and I'm in the dwarven city now. But then I ended up losing a save that sent me back to the start of a mission that I don't want to do again. <laughs> yeah, that's always the worst. <laughs> that is like a proper bugbear of mine. It's like when like. You you die and you go back so far that you just cannot be asked to replay the game. It's properly annoying. Well, this is very off topic, but have you noticed when playing Titanfall mm. Two in the campaign and you die, and the spawns are always when you spawn back in, they're always still shooting at you. Uh, no, I haven't. Like, I've had it quite a lot when I was playing the campaign, more so in hard mode now. Right. But when I spawn back in, 
you hit, you hit your story checkpoint. Yeah. But that's sad. No, you didn't kill an no. enemy somewhere or something. And it spawns you back in after you die. And you just get absolutely pummeled. Like, I was stuck in this uh, about checkpoint glitch for about 10 minutes. Every time I spawn back in, one of the bosses with a cannon had just nailed me straight <laughs> out the back. And, it was just going... and then eventually it took me back to a previous checkpoint. But it took like 10 minutes. It was horrific. Oh, I, I, was not, no, I never counted that, actually. I don't know. I, I just jumped in straight into, into hard mode. But... Uh, I was listening to people talk about it the other day, and apparently, was there a, is there a system that tells you where to go? Yeah, there's can... uh, yeah, there's a little hint. I I was talking about it with Nevi earlier. Not, did not know I, that. I thought, that was one of I see. That's one of the things I thought they didn't. I don't think you get it in. Hardware. Oh, okay, that's why. That'd be why. You yeah, and I was like, it. huh. I I mean, I, I I never really got stuck, and I kind of I I don't know. I kind of blasted it, just blasted through. The, like, I never really had a problem with it, but but you know, there's kind of bits where you're looking around where you need to run. And you just can't get it straight away. You can get rid of it. There's On a... regular mode, you look and there's a bloke oh, okay. there. Yeah. There's like a button you can press that just gets rid of it. And I think you can turn it off in the options entirely. So it's not a huge deal. It is It is a weird thing that games have started to try it. Like... Titanfall 2 does love throwing information at you. Like There's about six options in the in the multiplayer settings for like turning off info. Because it loves to be like, oh, you've switched <laughs> weapon. Let me tell you all of the information about this weapon. Oh, yeah. oh! You've you've Three. just done something. Here are seven tool tips to cluster up the screen. It's like stop <laughs> just telling me things I can't see. <laughs> Seeing as we're on Titanfall two, shall we run through everything it was nominated for and didn't win? <laughs> so yeah, go on then. It... Do so, so game of the year it was nominated for and didn't win. Uh, the studio respawn was in the best studio category, didn't win. It was also in... There was like three other categories. Uh, best action game. Just... Didn't win. Best action game. Didn't win. Best multiplayer game. Should have won. Uh, didn't. Yeah, didn't win. Should have won. 100% should have won. So that's like, what, four or five? Yeah. Uh, yeah, best multiplayer was the other one, yeah. Yeah. So that's four or five that there is in Ridge. Overwatch. It probably is... should have at least cleaned two. Yeah, Overwatch has won quite a few things this year. And yeah, so while we're there, Overwatch, Game of the Year, I, apparently. I, right. I feel like that I'm the only person who thinks Overwatch is rubbish. Does someone else please back me up on this? Um, <laughs> I've had a go. Like, I've, I've played in various places. Uh, yeah. It's fine. What? Yeah, I just... <laughs> yeah, it's just fine. It's kind of... It's all it's right. Like, uh, I had yeah. fun. Um... I don't understand. Not the, overwhelmingly. Like, no, like I played it. I played maybe like two hours of the game, but I have just haven't been like, oh, I need to go out and buy it. Yeah. See, for me, being a first-person shooter, no, I probably should have bought it, but it's put me off because it's Blizzard, and I've never really liked anything Blizzard have done. And it's kind of, it, it, and it, I've seen loads of videos of it, and I've watched quite a few streams of it, and I don't feel it looks really dissimilar to anything it, fi- it feels, as well as what, it, team it fortress. feels a bit like team fortress it's, yeah it's like team fortress if team fortress had more classes and then like it's that similar sort of abilities it's what team fortress 2 should be it's that similar sort of like exactly. strafing with high health and yeah yeah uh, and like, like a lot of the objectives it. are the same but it like, yeah there's a lot of pushing like yeah. trains along and stuff <laughs> yeah like the pacing feels the same i guess mm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get Christmas out of the way, and I'm gonna buy it and see if I can get into it. But so they won, they wiped the floor with everyone again. Actually, I say it again. So the Overwatch got Game of the Year, it got Blizzard got Best Studio, which are the two big ones. Yeah, I can kind of understand um, that because Blizzard do like a lot of things now. Hearthstone and it actually didn't wow, win so. some things which it, you'd think from that it would have done, but it got Best Esports Game as well and Best Multiplayer Game. Yeah. Yeah, it's just become just a huge lot. Overwatch. I just don't, I don't get it. But hey, <laughs> yeah. So best multiplayer had Battlefield One, Gears Four, Overcooked, Rainbow Six, and Titanfall in there as well. <laughs> and I, I think Titanfall should have mopped the floor. With all well, that's the thing. Like Rainbow Six Siege is what two years old. Well, it's forgotten about, isn't it? So it kind of it came out just after the awards last year. Okay. So it's, it's still technically in this year's categories. Oh, okay. and it's one of those it's just forgot about because yeah, it was good for a couple of months. They started competitive play, but everyone who did have it has now moved on to something. Well, it's, it's had like a kind of renaissance. Like it, 
well not necessarily like but it's I think it's picked up like a really steady following and it's getting lots of praise at the moment. Yeah, yeah they've done a couple of free weekends on Steam as well. So, well, I've, Six Siege is really good if you're playing with people you know and it's absolutely dreadful yeah, if you're playing with people you game, don't know. It's amazing. Whereas I think everything else on the list you can kind of play with just sort of randoms. randoms and have fun at it, but if you play Six Siege with randoms, it's just dreadful. <laughs> Except Battlefield. I don't feel you can play Battlefield on your own. It's her- I. I just get so angry getting sniped every time I walk out. <laughs> and then it converts me into a sniper. And I'm not a sniper on any game at all, ever. Maybe a little bit on Ghost Recon when I used to play that. <laughs> I love that. It's like, you've been killed by this person. Maybe you should just like take it up as an occupation. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. Right, screw it. I will just switch to a sniper and I will stand at the back of the fucking map and just wait for people to spawn in and be a prick like everyone else is doing. <laughs> There's 64, 64 players in a map. At least 35 of them are snipers. <laughs> and they're all watching the same set of rooftops and the same windows. And uh, you know that map that was on the beta? I just never, ever went anywhere near the town. Because there was always about 100 snipers watching that fucking place. Die enough to see yourself become so the just... enemy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Terrific. But I- I'm saying with all shooters, I just get really angry when I don't win anyway. I'm generally quite high scoring in most of them. So when I when I start getting sniped from miles away and it's like six deaths in a row from the same bloke who's camping <laughs> and I can't even find him, even when it shows me where he is, and I still have no fucking clue. Uh, and I, I've thrown a few controllers at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, move on. As bad as Modern Warfare, I broke four 360 controllers on Modern Warfare back in the day. Yeah, uh, but I think like I think Tyson Paul just should have taken best multiplayer. Oh, agreed. Yeah, I think I, I don't know. I think it's more innovative than the rest of the games. Uh... Well, I don't know if it's more in like it, uh, yeah, like I like it, cause it. It just I think world, it, you know, it's improving on the game last year, but yeah, I think Titanfall two is what one should have yeah. been. Yeah, I think it's probably fair to say. But I think like the other games, Battlefield one, and it's the same as Call of Duty. I don't feel they really innovate every year. And yeah, Battlefield got all the plaudits because it finally it's gone back to something that isn't fucking futuristic like everyone else. So if you want to play a non-futuristic shooter, you have to play Battlefield because there isn't any others out there, pretty much. Mm. Yeah. And then, so we got loads of people. In well, the yeah, well, I mean, there's there's well, Verdun like... and there's Red Orchestra, but they're more more niche. They are though, niche. Aren't they? Yeah, they are more. Yeah, they're not in that uh, big AAA <laughs> no. category, are they? Um, but it's like, in terms of first-person shooters, Battlefield. It's the same every year with different skins and maps. The gameplay style doesn't really change, I find. And the same with Call of Duty, they innovate a bit on their own get- game, but never there's ever, never anything majorly new. Yeah. Right, Titanfall, you could argue, is very similar to the new Call of Duty. But that's because but it does it a hundred times better than Call of Duty. Took on, like, learned from Titanfall one. Yeah, uh, exactly. They're just stealing things from each other. Yeah. Because one of them used to work for, work for Infinity Ward. So they're all just like, oh, let's just steal their stuff, and then everyone else is like, oh yeah, we'll just steal his as well. He won't care. <laughs> and they're just going to argue about it. I don't know, like, like that's the thing though. It's, it, like we've had like there have been good shooters this year, but I think, and arguably. The best we've had in a while with Titanfall 2. Uh, and I mean, it won't, like it didn't make me hugely excited, but Overwatch has a huge success. But I think part of like the fact that Titanfall 2's failed, well, not failed, it's just not gotten the popular attention it deserves, kind of makes me yeah, think yeah. that if, this is going to be the last, well. like, the last, like, good year for shooters in a while, because it just shows that something as brilliant and exciting and fun as Titanfall 2 simply cannot compete with the stranglehold that Battlefield and Call of Duty have on the shooter market. Like, EA yeah, are willing yeah, to... Yeah. Like, the fact that EA put it out alongside Battlefield 1 as essentially just, like, another way to try and attack Call of Duty just shows that EA aren't willing to... Yeah, they're fighting like, they're not will- Yeah, they're not willing to give anything else a try and that we are just going to continue, like, next year it'll just be... What's one of those? It's technically, theoretically bad for business, isn't it? You have this one giant, and you got another one coming out, but why would you let one try and overtake the other when it could affect you? It's technically affect your sales. I mean, some people will get one or the other, rather than get it. Well, because next year there's no Battlefield game, it's Battlefront 2, isn't it? That's... Oh, yeah, it will be Battlefront So, I mean, it'll yeah. be Battlefront 2 and Call of Duty, we got? Infin- in Ghost Recon Infinity Wildlands? plus one count? warfare, or what? Was it... Is it Wildlands? Yeah, that, that, I think Wildlands? that's coming out next year. That looks really good, actually. Oh, uh, I I saw the um, 
oh god, that that ether, like I saw the E3 demo for Wildlands and it was the cringiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, they always do it. Well, E3, it was like four they? people all who had been handed like a book of tactical, like Military tactical jargon. speak. It was like I've no one talks <laughs> like that, and it's like, hey, Pete here, going in on the tangos, Fox Two, Delta down, moving in. <laughs> Three tangos on your six, soldier. Yeah, it was very... E3 tend to do that, though, don't they? They want to show you how the game... Who are these people? ...really should be played. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I think I've seen one person play a game like that, and I think he was trolling everyone in. <laughs> yeah. Just for fun. Um, so what else did we have game of the year that was kind of... I think Pokemon Go taking best family game. Yeah. Kind of counts. I suppose it does. Yeah, I've, I've, I know a lot of people who've, like, gone out with their kids to do it, so... And that yeah, counts. yeah, so it's definitely a lot more than maybe best mobile game. Yeah. Because we were saying before, weren't we, that there's probably better mobile games. Well, like I think I think range uh, Reigns should have won best mobile game because that game was great. And uh, I do really like the Walking Dead game. Have you played? No. It? What is it? Is it? It's absolutely. So it's uh, one of those. It's like an RPG style. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Two... Calm down. Oh, right, hang on. <laughs> uh, I said the wrong. An RTS style. <laughs> oh right. Okay. <laughs> I got worried yeah, for so you it... for a second. <laughs> yeah. So it's like your your turn your turn based attack options, and you can build a team up, and then you can use all the stuff you collect from winning fights to to craft things like your health potions and that sort of sort band aids and stuff. And then you can go... and it's got a big ass story all the way through it, and it gives you choices as well. Right. So when you're um you can choose to save someone or kill them, and if you kill them, obviously you move on to the next bit. But say you save them, they could attack you to turn around and yeah, they could turn around and attack you, for example. And it's like an extra little level you might not get if you went on the other train. Mm. But it's free. It's definitely worth getting. I'd say have a go. Fair enough. I, yeah, like yeah. Reigns was really good. It was like it's basically if you were ruling a medieval kingdom through Tinder. I guess is how I would describe it. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Weird, weird. And it, like that's the thing. Like, really it, I've never, I've like of all the mobile games I've played, I've never found one that was so perfectly suited to the, to the platform, because you can play it in such short stints, and be satisfied, and it just perfectly makes use of, like, I don't know, it, like it doesn't try and do anything more than a mobile game needs to do. Like it's literally just flicking left and right. With yeah, minim- yeah. Minim- oh yeah, it doesn't try to be. Well, it's not like the like, like that you see those mobile games. Where it's like we're going to try and recreate Call of Duty on the mobile. It's like, n- no, why? Like there are all of like the all loads of clones of like that try and somehow bring AAA games to a mobile. But this, yeah, I think the only good one I've ever seen was Call of Duty did a zombies version, and it was actually quite good to play. Whereas all the other kind of the fast pasty things, it just doesn't work on a mobile because they can't keep. Yeah, well, I played that. I think even then, it's it's still it's still like, it's like a half baked experience it? because it is trying to yeah, yeah, emulate yeah. something that just shouldn't be on. Like, whereas this is just it was so like it's so perfect because you can play it in really short bursts and there's this like it has this great <laughs> sense of humor, uh, and it and it yeah and it literally is just a simple case of swiping left and right is how you interact with the game and it just uses the mechanic really well uh and you just make uh, and literally just making like, is that reigns as in uh E-I- yeah so as in uh yeah. long may he reign the reign yeah. of an empire yeah yeah and so yeah literally you just get these decisions it'll be like uh like you eat like basically you have a deck of cards and it'll flip them sort of shows you the card and it might be and you're the king, and it's your advisors and people approaching you in the court, and so you might flip a card over, and it's a bishop going, "We'd like to build a cathedral to honor something," uh, and you're like, "No." And then you've got four bars at the top, uh, and they can and they track like religion, the military, the people, and your money. And oh, so kind of like a a strategy. Kind of, yeah. And that you're bit. basically just oh, literally they can either be and. So and they just it just shows you if they're empty or full, and you've basically got to keep them all balanced because if either one of them gets full or is empty, then you you your king you're killed. And so uh, it's re- yeah. well, does it, does it, does it, the game end there? No, well that's the thing. So it's you're it essentially playing this dynasty of rulers, <laughs> and it's and, it's, and oh, there's okay. a hilarious thing yeah. at the start of the game where you think you're doing really well, so it's like. 
you have loads of money and you're making loads of money. You're like, yeah, and we do really well. And then you fill the money bar completely. And it goes, Sire, we'd like to hold a banquet in your honour. Okay. And you get and like, the only option, like swipe left, it goes, okay. And then swipe right, it goes, okay. And so you like, it goes, okay. And then you have no choice. And it's like, uh, they keep spending your money and you keep eating. And then you st- uh, like, you gorge yourself to death. <laughs> and so, like, as so, like, this this first time where you discover that filling all the bars is just as bad, and it's and it's just it's really it's just quite it's just quite funny. Uh, I'm gonna give that a go actually. Doesn't yeah, it's it's, it's, kind of it's incredibly simple. Um, but yeah, so basically, like a, a, a monocle die, and then it would be like, and then you take over as their, you know, like their son or their children, and yeah, then decisions that you make uh, will sometimes run over into successive reigns. And so these oh, little, yeah, these little modifiers sense. will affect the, affect the game. So it might be that you 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 send people off on crusade, and so that your population is constantly decreasing, or like your popularity okay, with the people yeah. is constantly decreasing. And so you sent so you sent off the crusade last previous reign, you died, and now you're trying to you all, you start at the next reign, but you've got to kind of you've got to try and sometimes. deal with the consequences, or like you make a successive you make a successful trade deal, and you're making too much money. Because you're, you're desperately trying to spend money to stop the money bar filling up. So someone comes to you like, we want to... <laughs> yeah, because you only end up eating <laughs> It's like, we, I want to paint an extravagant painting. Yeah, go for it, come on. <laughs> like, I need to spend more money. <laughs> uh, and, you, like, and so as you complete these little, like, there'll be like micro quest lines that as you talk to different people and you unlock bigger packs of cards that kind of add to the deck that you're drawing from. And it hints at this kind of bigger story as to why you seem to be cursed to play out the lives of these monarchs. Ah, so there's like a bigger kind of yeah, and it very it very slightly hints at it and almost breaking the yeah board basically board, I guess kind of like Assassin's Creed in the a sense. little bit yeah there's, and you it... know how Assassin's Creed you, you kind of you're not cursed as such but you're going through all these different. Different roles and characters. Yeah, basically, and so like in especially if you span all the and yeah, and you'll you'll die, and it will show the years that you reigned for, and give like that moniker a, a little title. So like if you like you gorge yourself to death, it'd be like King Stephen the Greedy. <laughs> yeah, King Stephen the Fat. <laughs> but no, it was just a wonderful game, and it, I don't know. I just didn't. I thought Pokemon Go, as much as it was a interesting phenomenon, I just thought it was a bit like the game itself was crap. Yeah, it relied heavily on certain things, like having to walk places, which I'm fucking terrible at. Though I guess we... Yeah, uh, I literally <laughs> drive to the shop, yeah. like, down the road. I never walk. So I have to stick my phone on the dashboard and then try and catch Pokemon whilst driving, which is obviously never a good idea. No, it's not. <laughs> Ever. So I think we're all agreed that Pokemon Go... Oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. I forgot that we, we, shouldn't just, have like, we, we had a rant about Pokemon Go a couple of episodes <laughs> back. I just forgot that. Uh, but yeah, I think we're all kind of agreed that there's Maybe not the best mobile game, but we can understand why it won because of how popular mm. it is. I guess. Yeah, I can get why it won. It's, I mean, it's a bit hard to ignore a phenomenon like that, isn't it? Sometimes, and just you don't really have another choice in that option. Yeah, I, I can understand why it did. Anyway. Another one I think made sense was Doom winning best music. Ah, oh, the soundtrack on Doom is great. It's yeah, really good. All custom made. Um. Yeah, or custom-made rock music, isn't it? Yeah, I always play that with my headphones on. It's so good. Yeah, you have to. All the telly on full blast. With yeah. the sound bar on and your surround sound. Yeah, I don't have any of those other things. So, headphones. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was one of those... It's, uh, it's nice to see a proper original soundtrack in a game. Uh, that's a bit more upbeat. You know, it's obviously most narrative games, they've got their they all original scores. Yeah, when yeah. you're telling a story and proper story-driven stuff, it's always either like... Like slower music in the background, or yeah, like kind of scene setting somber stuff. and a bit more. Tense. Yeah, yeah. And Doom is just hardcore, all-out fucking carnage. Mm. And I think the soundtrack just completely does it justice. In that oh, sense. it does. It complements it perfectly. It, it you kind of yeah, is it like um, have anything else? Hotline there. Miami soundtrack that's just it just like gets your adrenaline going. Yes, it is yeah, exactly yeah, like that. Yeah, it's similar to how like old school Tony Hawk's games always had a certain vibe, and it's obviously licensed music. In that sense, and then did you, did you manage to play Sunset Overdrive? I didn't know. Had it has its own complete similar soundtrack to what Tony Hawk's would have, except they they got one band to create it all specifically for that. 
rather than licensing other music. And it was just that whole complete, like, uh, Tony Hawk slash yeah. Jet Set Radio vibe in the music all the way through it. Yeah, cool. Uh, I was just having a quick look at what's it like best action adventure, and I just saw that the like the clarifying sentence is combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving, and I'm like, ah. sorry, but so how did Titanfall yeah, Titanfall win? 2's campaign <laughs> was a wonderful combination of combat and traversal with well, yeah, not, I guess not puzzle solving, but I think with Dishonored 2 coming out two weeks before the awards and being so good, probably had an influence there. So do we want to do our top three? There's a dragon on a bit. So should we start from the bottom and we'll all just do our threes? Uh, I picked Speedrunners, which uh, came out of Early Access this year. Uh, and yeah, it's a sort of platforming uh, parkour game, uh, 2D, and you just basically just race around courses uh, and you run, jump, and grapple your hook your way to victory. Uh, but it's just it's it's just hilarious fun and love a grapple hook like yeah just excellent local co-op basically oh local co-op yeah like it's um like you can play online but i i think i have maybe once or twice but i've played like just played it loads with with friends because yeah i like i've that's i curate a collection of, I, basically any time there's a promising looking local co-op game i get it purely just so i can add it to a collection of local co-op games that I have on my PC. So uh, I think my collection's growing. But yeah, no, Speedrunners is really fun because it's quite easy to learn and it has that sort of thing where you don't play it for a while you kind of get, like, you kind of lose your skill and it's one of those games where you'll start the evening playing it with friends and you all, you all pick it up quite quickly so that by the end of the evening you suddenly got really competitive. I like games like that. Because... And it's just, it's great fun. And so you just get these really tense moments where, uh, so basically the aim of the game is uh, you're four runners. And basically you've just got to be the last one on the screen. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, if, you know so exactly yeah, if you fall you off the left, yeah, so if you fall off the left hand side of the screen or right hand side, depending on which way uh, you're moving along the course, then you, you, you're you out yeah, the I race. I played that at EGX last year, now you said it. Yeah. And you basically just have to keep racing until you're the last person on the screen. But when it you and but when it gets down to two people uh, and the race drags on, the screen like starts closing in on you, and so it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until like you're <laughs> to force the end of it. And so like you'll end some, you end up with these these really tense races where like two of your friends are literally neck and neck, essentially occupying the same space on the screen, and then one person like slips up and makes the tiniest mistake and it's all over. But it's it's a great game. Awesome. I went for originally. Uh, Dying Light the following scenes and then I argued with myself because it's an expansion and I couldn't justify it I went with Doom because I love Doom um, I thought the campaign was awesome obviously the music was awesome um, and I had, I've, I've got, my list is games I've just really had fun with this year rather than kind of going with an, I mean some of them probably justified most of them being there but it's more the games I played and really enjoyed a lot more than others which I don't know maybe not didn't win awards this time around I think Doom had to be in there. So I was just saying, you can't really ask more from a game than just to really enjoy oh, it. Oh, yeah. Like... That's what it should be about, isn't it? Uh, my number two uh, was Titanfall. Oh, cool. Like, I have not had as much fun with a shooter. Well, I don't know. Single, like, the single-player camp- campaign was everything I want from, like, a, just a, like, a shooter campaign. It was short. It was filled with enjoyable toys that the game hands you. You, like lets you play with them for a bit and then goes no come on keep going there's more toys further down the line go and enjoy those yeah my thing with that is uh, i liked how by the end of it i was devastated i won't ruin it for, for anyone not playing it especially nevi who's playing it now but it was nice to actually get to the end of a shooter campaign and be actually have some emotions rather than be like thank fuck that's over because i feel like there's too many shooter campaigns are really linear and generic so the platformer aspects of the titanfall campaign mixed with the story aspects um, were both actually both really top notch, whereas most of the time they're a bit shit. Yeah, I mean, I thought I'd like I didn't think the story was anything special, but I thought it did like enough. It was like here are some characters that are interesting enough and enjoyable to play with, and we're going to take you on this short seven-hour campaign that will waste absolutely none of your time because we have packed it with super fun stuff. Yeah, super fun stuff. 
and like there was no there was no downtime. It was just enjoy this now, enjoy this now, and it was it was succinct and wonderful. And the multiplayer is the most fun I've ever had with a multiplayer shooter. That's fair. Yeah, I could second that as well. Actually, um, my number two though, I went for Firewatch because for me it was one of those games that I wouldn't re- like. I only played it because we you guys were speaking about it on the podcast. And you were like proper into it. I was like, oh, I can give that a go. And then when I started playing it, I remembered seeing it at E3 and being like, oh, that's quite cool. And then I played it all in all in one one massive sitting from start to finish, all the way through. And and I fucking loved it. But yeah, I, just generally it was just an awesome game. And it's something that I wouldn't normally play. Like, I, would, I, just, I wouldn't normally pay for. I wouldn't normally pick up. And I played it. Took a chance on a game that maybe I wouldn't like, and just fucking loved it. So all round, all round decent game. Yeah, especially while it's probably cheap now. I remember lo- really liking the look of it. Around the time when it was in development, it was one of those games you don't but, see, ever uh, see ever see any of the characters either. So all okay. the story aspects of characters, it's all done on like their conversation and stuff. And I find that being able to give you either an emotive feel or want you to hear more without actually seeing any of the characters ever is, is a really like the closest you get is a silhouette and some hands. But I think all of the, literally all, having all of that and then still being so connected to the characters is obviously a testament to. To the game's design and actors and stuff. So the big one. The big one. Game of the year. Game of time. Game of the year. And then and then we can argue about one of the three. We can argue about which one it is. Uh, XCOM two. Ooh. It was. Yeah. It. I mean, re, re start of the year. Um, Almost forgotten about, I guess. In that, in... Yeah. No. I mean, I mean, kind of. Yeah. Because it's, it's been a while, but. Uh, like the first XCOM game, is, well, the first of the rebooted XCOM series, perhaps one of my favourite games of all time. Uh, and I guess, yeah, and XCOM Two just just delivered kind of everything I wanted. Uh, oh. I don't know, like I think, I think I think I don't know, yeah, it, like the complete package. I was just incredibly way. satisfied with what it delivered. Like the, it it kind of yeah did everything and. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's it's weird because like I could I could sort of I could say why I loved speedrunners and Titanfall with ease, but with XCOM two, it's just like it was. It's one of those you great. struggle to pick out what's good in it, don't you? Because everything is so I good just, in games like that. It, yeah, it just del- yeah. I think it delivered on what I had. Ex- it lived up to the expectations I had set for it, and that is just so yeah, rare. It is rare for a game. Yeah. I mean, like, and. I like and I jumped into it and because I've been playing XCOM a lot, I jumped in on like a hard difficulty with on Iron Man and just got my ass handed to me like six times. I just literally because I kept starting and trying to play and they're like, nope, lost again and I've lost again and I've lost again. Uh, and then eventually uh, sort of set it down to regular difficulty and allowed my uh, allowed myself to. Reload some saves and still had just had a blast with it. Still playing it now. Uh, still playing it now. Yeah, no, I've I've gone back now. To, I've re re upped it to the difficulties that I tried to jump in at, and uh, and I've and I'm, and I'm making much more progress now. I think I think and, that's the key to any game like that, especially if you come out at the start of the year. If you're still playing it now, it's one of those that's obviously even if you took a break and went back into it. So there's a lot of games you don't go back into, do you? No matter how much you enjoyed them. Whereas if you can go back to it, that extra replayability factor. All, yeah, like it's. I think it's like, like it's such a like a re- I've, There's. I haven't played the most recent DLC. Uh, I mean, like, I was slightly disappointed with the DLCs, which weren't quite as good as the the one big expansion that the first game got, but still pretty decent. But there was there was one really minor thing that I loved, which was uh, it added like a custom character creator, because basically within the the game is you're leading these your squad of people against uh, aliens and it's sort of turn-based combat uh, as you direct a squad of, sort of four to six people uh, and so in the first game you get you get you get recruits and they're all randomly generated uh, but then you, you're free to customize them as you you see fit um, and so in my first game like I'd slowly grow attached to the recruits and so as they well the ones that survived anyway and uh, ranked up and got promoted, I'd you know be like, oh, 
you did particularly well on that mission, you're getting a hat. <laughs> yeah. Or... Dishing out your rewards. <laughs> oh, you need some new friends, so, like, man. <laughs> exactly. So, like, so, uh, so I'd had like these elite soldiers that looked just awesome because I'd like customize them and be like, oh, you know, I re- I remember that happening on a mission. I'll try and customize you in a way that reflects it. Uh, but they they added a basically a custom character creator that you could create like pre create characters and then add them to the the sort of pool that the game draws from for the characters. Oh, that's cool. That's uh, really but basically, cool. what it meant I could do was I reloaded my final save of XCOM. Uh, and essentially spent like most of, yeah spent several hours recreating all the characters that I had in my final team, like all the ones that had survived and completed the game. Uh, I then put them into XCOM 2 because basically the, the storyline for XCOM 2 is that everything in XCOM failed and the aliens succeeded, and essentially you playing XCOM was them having you trapped in a simulator and essentially using your mind to simulate what could have happened and then using those simulations to beat you. And so I basically brought in all the characters that I had from XCOM and then the idea in XCOM is you're kind of this rogue resistance unit fighting against the alien occupation of Earth. But it just meant that they all started and so like in my head they'd all gone into retirement and then you rejoined XCOM, and so I was playing with the same characters. So you gave them that, that sequel they really deserved. Yeah, literally. So I just thought it allowed me to do that, and XCOM just excels at sort of organic storytelling that is entirely personal to the to the player. Because I've got a friend that played XCOM and does um, just did not have a similar experience. Like he likes he likes to make it very impersonal where it was just like I don't customize them I keep them as grunts and kind of you know they are faceless soldiers in this war that is heartless and it's just these complete and whereas I was like no that's uh you know that's that's Lars Anderson he he fought and held off the alien and like and I get really invested in the characters whereas he's like no no that's rookie number three he's survived six combat missions and like it's just and so you and so you end up with these just like organic stories that you just kind of in like the game allows you just just kind of impose on on your on your squad uh and and so because the game has a just just enough story but not so much that it gets in the way of you kind of creating these narratives in your head for what's happened to your squad as you kind of have this idea of oh you know like first mission you've barely survived by the skin of your teeth and then in that second mission you know like it's a and it's so it develops in your head uh yeah and the second game basically just kind of improved on lots of things that the first game did just lots of little fine tweaks and it's nice when sequels really nice. work isn't it yeah i mean like it was a bit it was a bit than... buggy to start but uh, yeah, you have those uh, launches. And then it was like, that that like it was patched. And... No, and the, you know, there's like it's got a, an awesome modern community who have added loads of really minor things that are great. Beneficial to everyone. One of those. Yeah. See, mine will take no time at all because we've already swept about it to death, time for two. For me. But with, with shooters being my thing. And that was, for me, the best shooter of the year out of any of them. And probably the game I've played most this year. And it's only been out a month. So I did, I did a good solid couple of days on that straight away. And then I'm still playing it now. So I went back today for the double XP weekend. But Yeah, I, I haven't played it actually yet. But I, I, should, I should jump on. Uh, and so should you, if you're listening. Person that's listening to this. Get Titanfall 2. It's great. It deserves more players. Oh yeah, everyone play Titanfall 2. Please. Because we need people to play with. Because <laughs> no one else has played it. Yeah, it's not dead, but it will be, and we need your help. And it has free DLC. You won't have to pay for anything, listener. Well, except customization. It's all free. Yeah. Any visual things. If you want new camos, you got to pay for them. But you want a new level or a new map? No, nah, you don't have to pay for that. Which I think is a very nice business model to to try and keep players, seeing as they're going to lose them all periodically. And every time a new DLC comes out for COD or Battlefield.
Yeah, which is wor- which is e- which makes it even worse if Titanfall Two does fade into obscurity because then it'll just give EA precedence to say, "Oh, well, look, we tried. Remember that game where we gave all the DLC away for free? That failed. Look, look at look at Battlefield where we charge you 120 quid for a complete experience. Look at how many people we have playing that." So that's our game of the year summary. I guess. So I think I think so. That's what we'll do. Rather than the one game of the year, we'll have three. Because we're never gonna, we wouldn't come to an agreement anyway. And which is better? So our top three games of the year, right there for you. But we're over an hour, so we should probably should wrap up. Yeah, hour and a, hour and a bit. A nice lengthy podcast. <laughs> Alrighty, um, thank you for listening to the Game of Time podcast. If you have found this without the website attached, you can find us at gameoftime.co.uk or follow us on Twitter at. Game of Time UK. Uh, you can follow me personally at Nevada HM on Twitter, and you guys are. I am at Mike D underscore eighty nine, I think. Just go on the Game of Time Twitter. I'm on there some. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that. We'll go with that. Uh, How about I'm, you, George? Uh, at underscore uh, scruffy looking capital S capital L. Nice and descriptive. Super. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, uh, Thanks for listening to the podcast and we'll, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.